Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and in today's video, hosting a real-time team editing session, internet only, I'm going to show you how team editing works now in version 10. As with previous versions of Eclipse, it's important that all of your team members are on exactly the same version of version 10 in order to team edit. I'm in Eclipse and I'm going to begin on the reporter side of the equation. If I go to settings, you see that I have my username and user file name as reporter on this computer, and on my Scopus computer, it will be set as Scopist. Additionally, my reporter background color is white and my Scopus background color is blue. Before you get started team editing, there are a few things to consider. First, you want to make sure that your audio settings are correct. I'll go to settings, real time, audio recording, and if you select compression, we recommend that you use Opus Audio for team editing. And if for some reason you don't want to use Opus, you can go ahead and use GSM at 22.050. However, I'm going to go ahead and select Opus. I previously made a video about Opus Audio in Eclipse version 10, and I'll put a link to that video in the top right. After selecting Opus, I'm just going to hit OK all the way out. That's the only settings consideration to take into account when you're doing team editing. And those small audio compressions will produce files that are small and easy for Eclipse to send even over weaker networks. Next, before beginning every team editing session as the reporter, if you're going to communicate over the internet, that you see your SRV indicators. You see that I have my universal indicator in the top right. In my status bar, I have my SRV indicator. And if I go to Tools, Connection Magic, View Connections, you see SRV here as well as in my info bar. Once you've made sure that your audio settings are correct and that you're connected to the internet, you can simply start real time. You can start your real time file by going to Alt T or pressing Translate. I'm going to select to record audio. I'm going to call my file V10 Team Editing. I can add any dictionaries that I'd like. But most importantly, at the bottom, I'm going to check Share Document with Team. As long as this is checked, Eclipse will automatically start a session for me. I can press OK. I'll choose to start from the last stroke. And next, I'm brought to the Session Settings window for my Team Editing session. And you see that now in version 10, the session type is listed as Team Editing. Since this is an internet-only example, I do have internet checked and I'm not going to use any of these LAN settings. If you're working completely over the internet, there's no need for them. As with previous versions of Eclipse, persistent sessions are for bridge mobile sessions rather than team editing sessions. For the document name, Eclipse will provide an automatic suggestion based on the current file name. You see that it has V10 team editing in the center. You can change this name to anything that you'd like if you want to. Next, you will need to provide a password for the session. You'll need to give this password to your team members so that they'll be able to log on to your file and make edits. The password can be as simple or complex as you desire. However, do keep in mind that it is case sensitive. I'm going to make sure that upload audio is checked because I do want my team members to get my audio. And I'm going to leave room at auto rather than choosing a room for it to assign me to. I'm going to leave publicly visible checked so that my teammates can find my file in the list of files. They'll still need the password to see any of the content, however this will make the file easier to find. I'll press OK, and you see that I've been taken into my real-time file, and my view connections window has opened. You see that my session name is listed, and down here in the information box it does tell me that I have been put into room 1. And so I know that I'll be able to tell my team members that my file's in room one, the name of the file, and the password that I selected earlier. I'm going to go ahead and begin writing. And I'm going to show you how you can join a session as a Scopist. Next, I'm going to transition to joining a real-time team editing session as a Scopist. I'm in Eclipse on my scoping station, and if I go to my user settings and to my edit tab, I do have edit station user checked. 
This will ensure that any text entered on this user will come up in the edit station color selected by the reporter. If the reporter desires, you can also select a text type color assignment next to edit station user. This will allow the reporter to assign different text colors to different participants in the team editing session. I previously made a video about edit station users and text type colors, and I'll put a link to that in the top right again. Additionally, I'm going to go to my display tab and I'm going to make sure that print commands is checked. It's important that everyone in a team editing session have print commands checked. This will tell you when Eclipse is synchronizing a file or reconciling a paragraph. Any paragraphs that shouldn't be edited will be highlighted in pink or coral. In the display tab, there are a number of team editing highlight colors. You see that there is a coral color for reconciliation, a dark red color for reconciling a single paragraph, a light pink color for marking the last paragraph in the document, and a bright intense pink that indicates there is no connection to the team editing server. Anytime any text is highlighted with any of these colors, which you can customize, you want to make sure that you don't edit that text. I'm going to close out of my user settings. Now that I've ensured that my print commands are on and my edit station user is correct, I can go to Tools, Connection Magic, and Edit Shared Document. And you see that I see Room 1. I see the job that I just began on my reporter computer. I'll press OK. And I'll enter the password. And again, the password is case sensitive. As I press OK, you see that you do immediately see some of the reconciliation colors. And at the top, there was a synchronizing document message. However, Eclipse quickly synchronized the entirety of the document, and all five existing pages have immediately been made available. Once you've joined a team editing session, editing the document is no different than editing any other file. You can type in text, global text, and use any of your other editing commands in any other macros, even if they're macros that are specific only to you. In the View Connections window, you see that I see not only my name, which is Scopus, as I mentioned before, but I also see the reporter listed. And you see that it does indicate what page and line number the reporter is currently on. And the reporter right now is following along with the real time, and so the line number is periodically updating as the reporter enters more and more lines of text. If on the reporter computer, I move to the top of the document, you see that on the Scopus side, the page and line number reported has immediately changed to 1-1, indicating that the reporter is indeed at the top of the document. If as the reporter I hit control page down to follow the real time again, you see that my page and line number have adjusted to the current maximum page and line number and is updating as each new line of text is entered. This box allows you to keep track of all of your team members. You'll always know what page and line number each of your team is on. In addition, if I return the reporter cursor to the top of the document and move my Scopus cursor to the top of the document, you see that I see a little flag indicating that the reporter's cursor is at that location. This allows you to know where each of your team members are and ensure that you're not typing on top of each other or making any of the same edits. And if I go to the end of the document as the Scopist, you see that the last paragraph in the document is highlighted with that coral color, which indicates that no edits should be made in that paragraph. If the reporter cursor moves through the document, you see the reporter cursor and flag move through the document on the Scopist side. And this will be the same for all of your team members. In the info bar on the left hand side of the Scopus screen, you do see that there is a team audio count. This indicates how much of the audio the Scopus has currently received. This is a good thing to keep an eye on to make sure that you continue to receive audio throughout the job. Playing back audio as a Scopus is as simple as placing your cursor wherever you'd like to hear the text and hitting Alt J. Transitioning back to the reporter's view, I'm going to show you what it looks like to see your Scopus moving in your document.
as the reporter, you see that in my View Connections window, I have the same information about my Scopist. The box indicates that the Scopist is currently located on page 2, line 1. And I see that if I move there, I do indeed see my Scopist cursor flag. For instance, if as the Scopist, I were to choose a different conflict selection, such as the wrong conflict selection, you see that that change is immediately updated on the reporter side. Additionally, if the Scopist types in text, such as adding punctuation, or simply typing in text, you see that that information comes up immediately on the reporter side. And since the Scopist had edit station checked, it comes up in the color that I've assigned to my Scopist. Your Scopist and proofreaders that are working with you on your team can make any changes necessary within your document. Globals are also included. For instance, if on the Scopus computer I've moved my cursor to the word alligator, I can global this word as Alcatraz instead and submit it as a job dictionary global. And that word is changed throughout the reporter side of the document. And if I open up the job dictionary, you see that alligator equals Alcatraz is now in the job dictionary as well. And so your Scopus is able to make any edit and use any audio in your document just as they normally would, and you're able to benefit from those globals. I've had a second Scopus join my session. You see my initial Scopus here and now Scopus 2 additionally, and you see that Eclipse is reporting the location of both Scopus independently, and I can see them each in the document. Since I now have at least two Scopus, when I end the translation and close out of the job, I will have the option of making one of the Scopists the host of the team editing session. This will allow my Scopist and proofreaders to continue working in the file together in my absence. This allows me to move to another location and rejoin them later or take another job. As long as all of the text has been synchronized and all of the audio downloaded on your Scopist side, they'll have all the information that they need to continue working. In order to make one of your team members the host, you first want to end translation on your file. I'm going to press Shift-Alt-T. I'll click Yes to stop translation. And next, I'm going to close my document. And this is what's going to prompt me to make someone else the host. As soon as I press Control-Q to close my document, Eclipse warns me that other people are still editing and asks me if I'd like to transfer host status to another team member. And it does tell me that if I don't do this, all team editing will be closed. So if I hit no, everybody will be removed from the team editing session and they will only have their copies of the document to continue working in. However, I can click yes and choose one of my scopists to make the host. And now you see that in my view connections box, scopist says host. Now I'm free to close out of the file and either end my day or continue my day as I need to. And now I'm going to transition back to the Scopus computer so you can see what that host transition looks like. On the Scopus computer, you see that now there's only Scopus 2 and myself in the session, and it does list me as the host. The reporter is no longer present and the reporter's cursor is also no longer present in the document. And since there are only two people in the session, if I do close out of it on this computer as the host, that will simply end the team editing session. So I will hit Control Q and the file simply closes. And you see that my session information has disappeared and it tells me that the file and session have been closed. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the very basics of team editing over the internet in Eclipse version 10. As this series continues, we'll go more in depth on some of the advanced features. But to get started, this is truly all you need. As always, Advantage Software offers anytime support 24 seven. Tech support can be reached with any question, anytime, including weekends and holidays at 772-288-3266. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we publish new content in the future. Thank you so much and have a great day.